well, an outcome of these seasons being too long and hard is that it can lead to overtraining and athletes and riders resorting to doping to overcome fatigue. If we look at doping, I think there's riders using performance enhancing products just to survive season in, season out and to compete solely for mediocrity. Um, and I think there's various issues with this as well. Obviously, there's, it's illegal and there's various uh, ethical issues as well as, as you know, various, of the, various other presenters tonight have, have spoken about. It paints the sport in a poor public light and often we've seen that some of these doping circles have been very well organised. We've seen Operation Puerto in 2006, as Andrew spoke about with Dr Fuentes, and there's the Armstrong investigation going on at the moment as, as good examples of why these are really well organised rings and, and a big business really. Um, I think the reason drugs has never been offered to me, performance enhancing drugs have never been offered to me and I feel that those influencing me at the time ne knew never to suggest this as well as they knew I was very outspoken about this and I'd, I, I'd never do it and I think that um, I've never even really known how it's done until more recently by some of the admissions of, of people like Floyd Landis of, of how they, how they uh, doped and avoided detection. I have suspected it in more recent years in my career though during, uh, with relation to the, well I, I've suspected it because um, the workload that some of these athletes are doing is, is potentially too great on them to do naturally. For me though it led to overtraining and this led to chronic fatigue and, and West Nile virus which is a virus sort of found on the other side of the other side of the globe and it's, I probably contracted this because my immune system was so run down uh, and after, after so many arduous seasons and so much training. And this is probably not uncommon for other, other riders and athletes that they do get run down like this. Um, it's clear in hindsight how this could happen and I guess my body was in continual deficit and uh, that model is just going to be unsustainable but it just never seemed that clear at the time. Uh, when you're in these cycles it's it is what it is, you're just going from step to step and race to race and you don't see the bigger picture necessarily. I use legal ways of restoring my health, including sports doctors and sports physiologists, osteopaths, naturopaths, Chinese medicine specialists, and I estimated probably in about 18 months I had a medical bill of at least $30,000. In hindsight, knowing what I know now, doping probably would have fast-tracked this recovery process for me but I never even understood it as to being a solution at the time. And, and it, that never even mattered anyway because it wasn't something I'd be willing to do. I think the teams often misunderstand their riders and they often just want their riders to perform, um, which is often contrary to how they sell their image to the public. And they're willing to turn the blind eye to doping if, if the results from riders are forthcoming. And as long as they can plausibly deny this, I, I think that they're, they're okay with it. And I think that some sport directors probably even consider it professional to dope to, to sort of to get the job done, if you like. I feel one of my teams I was misunderstood by as though they just felt I didn't want to perform. Um, although this is in despite of having a well-documented lack of health. And ethics go beyond simply not having systemic doping as well within teams. They need to honour agreements and not bully their athletes into overtraining and making the wrong choices. Uh, I think ethics just spends much more than, than doping in sport and, uh, and teams need to sort of adhere to that, those ethics as well. And something I have witnessed, although I've never been offered performance enhancing drugs, but I've never been offered illicit drugs either, but there are great so, uh, psychological effects I've seen to have witnessed associated with doping or associated with people that I consider to have probably doped in their careers. And I've, I've witnessed them using large amounts of alcohol, which is, seems to be a common theme tonight, or you know, f or finding, I guess you'd say. And um, I've, I've sort of witnessed some of these managers and writers pretty much drink themselves to sleep. And I suspect it's because uh, they have used performance enhancing drugs and living this lie and this deception is just really wearing on them. So they have to resort to methods to release stress and, uh, and social drug use. And, and also I watched relationships break down around these, these people as well. So I think I had, 
I once had a team doctor who was a, a drug addict during his medical school and he told me of how incredibly complicated life is as a drug addict because you are living this deception and I suspect it's exactly the same for dopers. Some solutions to doping and overtraining would be to make the races less difficult and seasons less grueling. Also, I think we need to reduce the influence that these team managers and sport directors have in cycling and replace them with, with more sports science and, um, and this is becoming more widely sort of accepted now that we, we can rely on sports science as a valid uh, training tool and approach to structuring your season. And also I feel something that needs to happen is that the riders need more of a collective voice in the form of a, of a union. And this way they'll be able to lobby for greater rights and, and maybe that would also reduce doping if the seasons were able to become less arduous. I think also a point I'd like to make is that this opinion now that I've come to is in hindsight. It wasn't something I was able to see at the time. Um, this, broader, this broader perspective I have now on cycling as I said before, like you're just caught up in this system where you're going from race to race and training camp to training camp and before you know it's the end of the season and you're getting ready for the next year and suddenly three or five or eight years have gone. Um, so it's easy to be caught up in this cycle and, and I, I think it's important that um, the context is that now is I, I, I did make mistakes that I feel I could have avoided in hindsight. To conclude, I, I feel it's possible to have a sustainable career in cycling, a professional career in cycling in the current system, although we do, athletes, particularly when they're young, would need the proper guidance from experienced professionals. As I said earlier, more guidance from sports medicine and, and sports physiologists would, would be important, and a reduction of the influence that the existing managers have is to overtraining their riders as they've done for years and years. And also I'd like to point out just how wide the effects are of doping. Um, one of the concepts before was that um, doping causes harm to others. I think that's, that's really important that I was probably, my career has been affected by doping even though I've never doped. Um, and also there's the psych psychological effects from, from doping that these, these people use, uh, use stress release through social drugs as well. I hope my perspective has been, been valid to this topic as well. Thanks for listening. Question for Trent on uh, cycling news. Uh, Jonathan Borders was saying uh, this is a corollary, a corollary to his uh, his talking point that you were actually blackmailing him, him last year, and he said since there is no uh, legal suit uh, issued to uh, Garmin Slipstream, that that is proof that you were blackmailing him last year. So. Could you just uh, bring can I, us can I just, can I just intervene there, just because the question raises a legal matter, uh, and uh, I, I have an involvement with Trent in this legal matter. Um, and all I, all, I want to, all I can add to, to that, in case Trent wants to say anything, but just to intervene on a legal level, to say that there are uh, matters progressing, uh, but it'd be, you know, I think it'd be better legally not to discuss precisely what matters are progressing. I say that, well, look, that answers the question in here. Because I don't know if Trent wants to say anything to do. No, I think that would be appropriate. Thank you.